What's up guys? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. I'm down here at the abandoned church property today and we're not going to be working on the church today. I got a little quick fabrication video for you guys. I bought me a job site tool storage box the other day, job box, whatever you guys want to call these things. Basically it's a big huge toolbox that you keep on site here and it locks up good. It's heavy duty and you can keep all your tools in here. So, as you can see, I got my concrete saw, my big Bosch demo hammer, drills, impacts, concrete vibrators, cordless saws, all kind of goodies down in here. And <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with the box. It's not the best thing out there on the market. It's not the heaviest duty built or anything, but for the price, I'm, I'm happy with it. One thing I do think that this box is lacking, though, is a place to put all these things. All your little odds and ends, your small hand tools, all that gibberish doesn't need to be piled up down there at the bottom of the box. It makes it hard to find things and hard to uh, organize well. So what I want to focus on today is I'm going to build a tool tray, a custom tool tray that will fit right in here. I don't know if it was an option for these boxes, but uh, I bought this at Rural King. Actually, I bought it from a buddy who bought it at Rural King, but anyway, he didn't get one. I'd, I've never seen them at Rural King might be able to go to these guys' website, but not worth the hassle. I can just whip one up here pretty quick. So it's got a nice little lip here where the tray can rest and slide back and forth. So it's going to be the entire width of the box, and we can slide the tray back and forth and uh, get the tape measure out and measure this thing up. So I took my measurements here and I think I come up with a number I'm going to be happy with. We're going to build a tray 47 and a half long by six and a half inches wide or thereabouts. This number is arbitrary. I just don't want to make it too wide to where I couldn't get the big stuff in and out of the box. I would have to remove the tray to get the big stuff in and out. So I just want to make it narrow enough that it's not in the way. I have a sheet of expanded metal at home that I think is going to fit the bill on the length and I think it's probably close to that so we're probably just going to make it whatever it is that dimension here we are back at the house now i pulled that scrap sheet of expanded metal i was talking about and it actually looks a bit bigger than i thought it was looks like we got about eight inches here at its narrowest point uh but i don't think i want to go a full eight inches i'm not certain on that i think uh i think i might just neck her down to seven inches and we will Cut her off square, finish cutting this side, and that'll be our bottom of our tray. So now we're back here in the shop and I rummaged around through my uh, metal hoard and I come up with the uh, the best solution for our needs here. These, this is an old uh, bed frame, you know, for like your mattress and your box spring. Readily available on the side of the road on your local spring cleaning day. I grab these things every time I see them. They are not the best material for you know something that's got to bear a lot of weight or structural steel or anything like that they're kind of a thin uh high carbon angle iron i believe it's high carbon because when you weld these things they weld fine but they do tend to crack real easy they're kind of brittle so uh it's not it's not normal mild steel it's probably about the cheapest stuff that they can get their hands on but since we're just building a tool tray and it doesn't need to hold a ton of weight this is going to be just fine for our needs
All right. Congratulations, you've made it to the point in the video at which point you can yell at me for having a cluttered workbench that is a fire hazard. You'd be right. I, I get comments every time. You shouldn't have all that stuff on your workbench while you're welding. And you're right, but I've never had a problem so far. And I do have fire extinguishers located all throughout the shop. So, not too concerned about it. Let's get going. So now, it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple design what we're going for here. We got two long pieces here that are going to be our 47 and a half. And then we've got two short pieces here. But I'm going to stick these pieces out like so. And they will actually hang out the end. So I'm going to let these pieces stick out exactly one inch. This is an inch and a quarter angle iron from the back to the front there. It's inch and a quarter. So I'm going to hold them in a quarter inch and uh, we'll weld it up, letting this one inch hang out. And that will, that should allow our tray to sit into the box a little bit better without any clearance issues. I, I probably could get away with it doing like this, but uh, I know for certain I can do it like this. So we'll go with this way and that way I don't have to go down to the church and check a fitment issue or whatever because I wasn't really thinking about that when I measured it but this will be fine maybe hard to see on camera but there's a mark there for our one inch reveal Got the old Miller dialed in there now, huh? She's laying them pretty smooth. Get that corner welded up. Throw the other side in. Well, after welding here, we've got a little bit of spreading going on here. We'll just have to tighten that up with a little clamp action. This is actually just a wood clamp, but as long as you keep it far enough away from the heat, it does just fine. But we forgot the ground. fits now. Yeah, look at that. I like that glove. Beautiful. Well, it actually fits in there pretty snug. We're going to go ahead and buzz that thing in there in quite a few places. I won't say we'll weld the whole thing solid, but 
will weld it quite a bit. And I actually, hmm, maybe we'll weld it from the back side, eh? Eh. Alrighty, she is done, and she is a beaut, Clark. That is going to do everything I wanted and more. Alright, so we got our tray done there. She's cooling off right now, and the last thing we're going to do is give it a good coat of paint. So before I uh, spray anything like this that I've built or old stuff I've been working on, before I start worrying about painting it, I always give it a good wipe down with some acetone. Uh, you know, obviously I'm not going for a show finish here on this thing. It doesn't really much matter, but uh, sometimes you just run into grease or wax or whatever it is on these things. And the paint basically just falls right back off of it. So, paint's not free. Paint is pretty expensive. So I always just give them a quick wipe down so it stands the best shot that it's going to have. I got me half a can of uh, almond gloss colored uh, Rust-Oleum here, and uh, hopefully, hey, it sprays. That's better than half the cans I have in the shop. Full cans, you pull them off the shelf and they won't even spray. But uh, I've always found the trick with spray paint and stuff is just give it the lightest little half coat first. Seems like you go back over it after a few minutes after that half coat's on there and it really evens out and looks real good. I just watched a Watch West Work video this morning. He restored a old brake lathe. Said he doesn't like painting. It's actually one of the things I enjoy. Not to say I'm any good at it. I just find it satisfying to make things like this look nice. Because look how quick we went from ugly and rusty to starting to look like something. Well, they said three times the coverage. They weren't kidding. This stuff covers good. Running out. Now I have to dig around and see if I have another can of this. Got lucky, found this really old can. Uh, the copyright date on it's 1988, <laughs> but it's almost full and it says almond, so we shall see. Hopefully, it will still work. Oh, yeah. Nope, clogged up. Son of a diddly. Oh, back at the job site box. Ready for the moment of truth. Let's jab this puppy in there. Here we are about to play the world's best game of do I look like an idiot on camera. Is it going to fail? Hmm. All at once to it. It's so close. Urgh. Just needs to pop a little bit. Hmm. Well, that's 
disappointing. This is the most honest channel on YouTube. The thing I built doesn't quite fit right, so we're gonna have to do some on-site adjustments. Looks to me like if I just nip these corners off on a 45 here, it should slip right in. So I'm gonna grab the grinder and we'll do that real quick. Redirect my sparks, I've ruined far too many camera lenses doing it. So, take two. And boy, I really hope it works this time or you guys might never see this video. <laughs> Beautiful, see? I knew it would work. Now we just gotta load it up with stuff. Okay, I had to do a little bit of reorganizing to get everything fit in there nice the way I wanted it. And uh, a few of these things in here, like the uh, bigger crescent wrench, I didn't put it up on top because it actually doesn't belong in this box. Uh, it's just been stuck in here from random reason I had it here. So anyway, I'm happy with that. It does its intended job. It moves around easy enough. And uh, allows me access to the big things in and out of here. But uh, doesn't inhibit taking them in or out. So I'm happy with it. I know it's just a simple little build, but I uh, thought maybe you guys would like to see that. So... So anyways guys, that's how I built it and that's why I built it and if you liked the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up But it's time to close the lid on this project Catch you on the next one later